Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick note today from Jan about fishing and how the bad guys are trying to decrease the chances of a particular phishing email being reported to a security or system administrator. In the first example, and that's actually quite common, also seen this in legitimate emails, of course, which uh, may be the reason why uh, this uh, works relatively well. The attacker uh, will just add a paragraph at the end suggesting that, well, it's possible that you received the email by mistake. And if so, then uh, pretty much uh, just ignore it or, hey, maybe even click on this link. So a victim that doesn't recognize the charge and uh, doesn't necessarily believe a refund is necessary, will uh, more likely believe that this email was just a simple mistake and ignore it. Now, another phishing email that uh, Jan came across, and that one was actually written in Hungarian, just added a simple sentence. Hey, your system administrator told you not to report abuse. Pretty simple statement, and uh, of course, that's one I don't really believe will uh, make a big uh, difference. But who knows? Uh, maybe the bad guys have figured out here something that uh, I'm not aware of. Jan is spending quite a bit of time with uh, phishing emails, and of course, typically the ones that work are the ones that use well-known, respected, and trusted cloud services to host their phishing campaigns, and then also the ones that will include, for example, logos and other identifiers for the targeted company. And Solartype ran into six different PyPy libraries that are likely trying to impersonate the quite popular Matlib package. These libraries are more or less typos around Matlib, like Meratlib and Platlib and the like, but also, well, for example, Learninglib, which of course may hint at some machine learning uh, library that's being impersonated here. What they all have in common is that they were authored by the same handle, a uh, net doc one, two, three, and they do include crypto coin miners. So the goal here is for the victim to include these typo libraries instead of the legitimate ones and then mine crypto coins on the bad guy's behalf. Of course, a technique that we have seen a number of times before. And then we have an interesting vulnerability that was patched in Dovecot. Dovecot is an IMAP implementation, probably the most popular one out there and it suffers from a weakness in its start TLS implementation. Now start TLS is a little bit of a tricky issue in the first place in that it does allow a client to upgrade a plain text SMTP connection to TLS. And it's usually more used in connections between mail servers, not so much between clients and mail servers. But the problem here is that even after the TLS connection was established, it is possible for an attacker that has a machine in the middle of position to actually inject a content into the connection and with that to redirect credentials or even redirect emails to the attacker. So this is certainly something that you do want to patch and patches are available for major uh, Linux distributions that ship with Dovecot. If you're exclusively using IMAP over TLS, for example, by connecting to port 993 instead of 143, which is the typical or more typical client configuration, then you're less likely going to be susceptible to this vulnerability. And Greg Young from Tripwire uh, did publish a blog post sort of as a follow-up uh, to a SonicWall vulnerability that was reported in September last year. SonicWall uh, did release a patch for this vulnerability, CVE 2020-5135, but apparently uh, this patch wasn't quite complete and exploitation of the remaining vulnerability let in a memory dump being sent 
to the attacker, which of course may include critical information useful for additional exploitation. Sonic Wall now finally fixed this remaining vulnerability. So uh, make sure that you are applying uh, this update uh, to Sonic Wall appliances that you are running in your network. We have seen a lot of exploitation against uh, these type of vulnerabilities in the last couple of years. And one of the sort of favorite things for ransomware actors to go after. So Sonic Wall or better Sonic OS is of course the operating system used here is what you need to update. Well, and that's it for today. If you missed it earlier, we had a webcast that's Jason Lamb and myself about some distributed applications and security issues around that. An archive should be available if you are heading for the sans.org webcast page. And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.